Hello, welcome to Geometry. Go ahead, open your book to Lesson 73, uh, page 483. Uh, we're dealing with trigonometry, so if you see Sokotoa, you've seen it a lot the past, um, past week. I've been trying to make you guys memorize it because this is where it all applies. We're going to deal with this, um, dealing with angles of elevation and depression. So this is all strictly word problems. But if you, once you draw it out, it's all triangles and these are all right triangles too. To understand about trig in those, using those trig functions, they have to be right triangles. If they are not right triangles, you cannot use the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Here. We have angles of depression and angles of elevation. So let's say I'm flying the kite, I'm looking upward, that's angle of elevation. Let's say I'm at a swimming pool and I see something on the floor, so I'm looking down, that's angle of depression. So angle of elevation and depression, just like how you read it is how you would write it. Another key thing is these opposite angles are congruent. So on one side of the line, the top, if this is 50, if you flip it to the other side, the bottom, not the one next to it, the one that's across from them. They are considered congruent. So example one, we have a guy flying the kite. Here it says, um, use the angle of elevation between the kite and the child to find the horizontal distance between the kite and the child. So the horizontal distance is what they have here as x. So we have 36 degrees, we have x, and we have 80 feet. Before we begin using these trick functions, the biggest problem you'll have is to see what you're going to use. I always label, we have 36 degrees, we're always using one of the two angles and they always just give you one main angle that you're focusing on. So we have to see what the relationship is to each of them. So for x, what is x to 36? Your three options is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And here, this is considered adjacent. 80 feet, what is that considered? That's considered the hypotenuse. So now we're looking for a trick function that deals with adjacent and hypotenuse. And if we look here, that is cosine. So the cosine of the angle, and the angle is 36, is equal to, co means adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 80. And now, after that, we solve for x. Your calculator, make sure you have it in front of you. Also make sure, I don't know if you guys are, um, if you have older brothers in algebra two, but make sure it's in degree form. But it's a sine, cosine, tangent. It's those three buttons right there. So to find x, we have to get x by itself. That means x is, 80 is dividing into x, so we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 80. And then if you do 80 times cosine of 36 in your calculator, and they're just going to ask you to round to tens or hundreds, you are going to end up with 64.72. You can also use your phone. Your phone has the option for sine, cosine, and tangent too, but they work out the same exact way. And then the distance from him and the kite is 64.72 feet. Next one, we have an airplane. Here, it's dealing with the angle of depression. Uh, the pilot in the plane cruising at 33,000 feet, so that's from the ground up here. Uh, let's see, see the lake, if the lake, if the angle of depression from the plane to the lake is 30, so they have 30 here, how far is the plane from the lake? So here is, we have this lake right here. They gave us this diagram here to start with. We have 30 degrees here, we have 33,000 here, and they said what is the distance from the plane to the lake, and they're asking for this x right here. So before we begin anything, we have to understand that here we don't have any information. So here, this triangle is where we have everything here. I know that the opposite angles, so if 30 is right here, I know that B and 30 are congruent. So if I were to draw this triangle out, I end up with 30 here, this is X, and this is 33,000. And now I could solve for it. To solve for it, I have to see which of the three trig functions I'm using. So in relation to the degree, so 30 degrees, what is 33,000 to 30? It's opposite hypotenuse or adjacent, and in this case, it's going to be opposite. X is considered the hypotenuse. So the trick function that you're going to use is sine. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this is the sine. 
sine of the given angle is equal to 33,000 divided by x. We can't multiply both sides by 33,000 because the 33,000 when you're dividing, especially with fractions, they have to be in the bottom for you to multiply both sides to undo it. In this case, you can't. So what you could do is you can multiply both sides by x. You get x sine of 30 is equal to 33,000. You don't have the x by itself, but you don't have a fraction anymore. You want to get rid of the fraction. And now, to get the x by itself, if you divide both sides by sine of 30, you can officially get x by itself. And then if you, when you calculate 33,000 divided by the sine of 30, you end up with about 66,000 feet. And now, example three. So here we have, we're comparing two different um, ratios with two different people. We have two different people from this um, angle. This guy's looking at the guy fixing the top of the building here. And this guy's looking at the top. Uh, he's looking at the guy up here as well. So they both create this little angle of elevation to look at this guy. And he's looking at it at a 40 degree angle. And she's looking at it and at a 70 degree angle here. The question is... Um, how, about how far away is each person pictured at street level? So here, X is being compared to the first one, Y is being compared to the girl here. So now, what I did is I, go, I went ahead and drew these triangles separately so I can see the bigger picture here. When I drew these triangles out, I know that they have to be right angle, and that's why I said in the beginning. So for this guy, it's comparing this to this whole section right here. All of this right here. So if I look at that main triangle here, my hypotenuse is x, my angle is 40. And I don't have anything down here, but I have my length here. From here, when I'm creating the triangle, one of my sides is the side of the building. And when I look at this, the side of the building is 60 feet. And now, looking at 40, we can see which um, trick function we're going to use. So from 40 degrees, 60 is considered opposite, and x is considered the hypotenuse. So that means the sign that I'm going to use is sine. So the sine of 40 degrees is equal to 60 over x. And then I go ahead and solve for it. I need to get the x by itself, but I need to get rid of that fraction bar first. So I have x is sine, x times sine 40 is equal to 60. And then I can get the x by itself by dividing both sides by sine of 40. Cancel that out. And then, 60 divided by sine of 40, I get 93.34 feet. So that's how far he is from that. So that's for x, but now we have to find the y. So here, from this angle, now we create a smaller triangle here. So we have this smaller triangle here. The angle is 70. We have the hypotenuse as being y. And then the leg right here, the side of the triangle, is the side of the building, which is also 60. And now, to see which trick function we use, 60 compared to 70 degrees is opposite. Y is considered hypotenuse. And I go ahead and use the formula. So that would be sine. So the sine of 70 yes, is equal to 60 over y. And then from this point, you get y by itself. Multiply both sides by y. So I get y sine of 70. I can't write this way, sorry. So then you get sine of 70. You're dividing both sides by it to get the y by itself. So 60 divided by the sine of 70, you end up with 63.85. Now, last one. We're dealing with the whole thing of buildings. So it's a lot of different shapes, but the main thing we're focusing on is that triangle up there. Um, surveyor, credit union, measures the angle of elevation of 15 degrees on top, from one top of the building to the other top of the building up there. What is the distance between the buildings to the nearest foot? And what we're looking for is this X right here. So they're comparing from this building, someone's up here, he's comparing to the top building over here. And we have this big triangle here. My horrible. Uh, there we go. Here we have 
15 degrees. Here we have X, and that's all we have. But from looking at the diagram, I have 600 feet here, and I have 800 feet here. What I'm trying to look for, and I could do a little math to find the distance between this height right here. If I were to take this much out of the 800, what would I end up with? And the math portion of that is subtracting 800 from the 600, and I end up with 200. So it's not 800 because we're not looking at this huge thing as a triangle. We're trying to look for just that small distance right here, and that's where we have to subtract 600 from the 800 to find that distance from up there. And now we have 15 degrees, x, and 200. Now, x being compared to 15 degrees is adjacent side. 200 being compared to 15 degrees is opposite side, and the only function that uses that is tangent. So we're trying to find the tangent of 15, and tangent is TOA, opposite over adjacent. So now, opposite is 200, divided by adjacent, which is x. And then from this point, remember, we have to get rid of the fraction first. We multiply both sides by x. Then you get tangent x times tangent of 15 equals 200. Divide both sides by tangent of 15. And remember, in your calculator, you're using tangent. You're not using sine or cosine. 200 divided by the tangent of 15, and you end up with 746. And this is round to the nearest foot. It was 746.41, or just 7. 146 feet from that building to the other building. If you have any more questions, make sure you go down there and let me know. I miss you guys. Bye.